How can we use a popular song to sparkle our creativity? This is what we are talking about in today's lesson. Hey, what's up, Yuki family? Marco here. Welcome back to another lesson. Today, I want to show you how to use a beautiful song to create something that will inspire you to play your ukulele every single day. This song is called Hurt by Johnny Cash. And one thing that I want to show you is how to transform the chord progression into beautiful exercises. So let's make it clear that the goal is not to learn the song. I mean, you have plenty of tutorials out there, but I wanna show you how to use the chord progression, change it, transform it, and create something worth playing. Now today I'm gonna be using my super tenor ukulele tuned in low G. So you got low G, C, E, and A. Now this song hurt is very simple. We only have three opening chords. A minor, C major, and D major. And back to the A minor chord. Now I'm not crazy, not yet. I know that these chords are not correct, but I'm using the chord shapes you will play on a guitar. So on the ukulele, we have D minor, F major, and G major, and back to D minor. That is something about this chord progression, melancholic, profound, beautiful. We have the D minor for four counts, and then F major for two, and G major for two. Now step number one, or element number one, let's use the finger picking technique to change these chords. Again, we are not trying to play the song. So we can really play these chords as we like. I'll give you a couple of examples. Now one thing that I love about the finger picking technique is that it allows you to single out each single string, right? So you don't have to think about the chords as just like one block of notes you play together but you can start thinking about different chord shapes. For example. Now for this example, using the finger picking technique on three strings allows me to reorganize the chords, right? Now I could play here in first position, but we can definitely spice things up. So I'm playing the same D minor with a bar chord on fret five. It's a basic triad. And then for the F major, I'm playing this chord shape, uh, always with a bar chord here, but uh, on fret number eight and G major you can go down to position one. You see how, you know, we easily create so much contrast between these chords and this one, which is much lower and deeper, right? The finger picking pattern is so simple, just ring, middle, and index. Now element number two, the strumming technique. I love this approach, especially when you combine it with the hammer-on technique, like this. Now with the strumming technique, you brush the strings up and down in a rhythmic fashion. It's kind of a quite straightforward technique. But with the hammer-on, you can add so much more color. With this technique, you can literally play a note with your fretting hand, a note or a couple of notes with your fretting hands. For example, in this case, you see how after I strum with a downstroke, I add two notes with the hammer-on technique. Now for the D minor chord, you wanna use the technique on the fourth and third string. 
We're not changing the chord shape. It's still the basic D minor chord. However, you wanna make sure that the first strum is played with the fourth and third open string. And then after that, you hammer uh, the string on fret two. Now you can do as many hammer-ons as you like. It's such a nice effect, I love it. But if you wanna keep it simple, you could do So you have down, 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 up. This is your strumming pattern. Down, 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 up. Now we do the hammer on on the first down stroke. And it's the same pattern twice. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Now let's do the same thing for the F major chord. Same hammer on with the middle finger. And for the G major, we have the hammer on on the first string. So start with the first open, and then you hammer the fret two. When you put it together, let's do it slowly. One, two, three, four. Now element number three is creativity, along with music theory, along with experimenting. So it's kind of an interesting um, approach because it allows you to break out of the usual chord shapes and try something new. Let me play the example. Now the idea started with basic chord shapes. So D minor with a bar chord on fret five, F major with a bar chord on fret eight, and D major with a bar chord on fret number two. So these are like basic um, kind of bar chord shapes, right? nice very nice to play but also quite challenging so if we get rid of the bar chords and play the open strings then we end up with something different beautiful chord seven five zero and zero a d minor add nine chord and then for the f major you can play this shape which is ten nine eight and for the g major beautiful chord, right? Four, three, four, two, three, and zero. You add the simple finger picking pattern and you're good to go. A Pima will be fine. Thumb, index, middle, and ring. Now for this creative section, you can do so much more. I mean, you could use a lot of different techniques, uh, a lot of different approaches. Um, I just want to show you another one with the natural harmonics on fret 12, first and second string. Listen to this. To get a clear natural harmonic, you want to have one of your fretting fingers touching, lightly touching the fret wire on fret 12. 
it's the fret wire on your right so so you're not pressing you are lightly touching the string and you'll do the same for the second string so you play the chord next chord Now element number four, I like to transform the chord progression into a beautiful riff. Let me play the example. Now, a riff is a catchy idea repeated over and over again throughout the song. Sometimes it defines the song itself. Think about the riff in Smoke on the Water. I mean, this riff is so popular that when you think about the song, most of the time you think about this riff. Now, for this chord progression, we are going to play single notes. So I have down, up, down. I'm using the right hand just like a guitar pick. Down, up, down. down. And now we have this phrase, second string, fret number one, zero. And back to the uh, third string, fret number two. Now you can do zero and two on the third string and then two again twice. So when I put it together, now same phrase, F major, I'm playing third string fret number five, down, up, down, this phrase on the second string, five, seven, and eight. And then G major. Second string for number seven, down. And then third string for number seven, up and down. The last phrase. We finish with seven, eight, and 10 on the second string. Let me put the whole thing together. Element number five. Let's play a beautiful solo over this chord progression. This is an interesting chord progression because we open up with a D minor chord, then F major, and then G major. Now we are not in the key of D minor though, so what key are we in? Well, we can consider this chord progression to be in the key of C major or A minor. So you can use the C major scale or the A minor scale to play over this chord progression. You have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Now, when you think about frets, you will have zero, two, three, five in one position, and then seven, eight, 10 in another position, and you can finish with fret 12. So you can use all these notes, and I really recommend trying on one string the most important thing is that you don't try to play all the notes up and down the neck all the time. Stick with one musical idea and you will be fine. Keep developing the same idea though. And then once you have that, you can move up and down the neck. Let me play the solo using the backing truck.
what an awesome way to spice things up, right? Now, the backing truck and the tab are available on my Patreon page, but also on ourpassionformusic.com. If you're serious about learning the ukulele, check ourpassionformusic.com. It's an awesome website. We run a daily challenge, a daily ukulele challenge. You can learn a lot of things. We spice things up just like we did in this lesson. So check it out. You have YouTube tabs, challenges, and courses, and I'm always there to help you along your journey. But of course, if you only need the uh, tabs, uh, YouTube tabs, you can check the Patreon page and support this channel. I'm gonna leave you to practice this, enjoy this lesson, and I'll see you next time.